Hello and welcome to News Across Nigeria. I'm Alumide Macaulay. On today's program, Federal government recovers 40 sports utility vehicles from a former permanent secretary. Minister of Information insists fights against corruption continues. Police arrest 17 suspects over clashes in southern Kaduna. And grandmother and four children killed in mysterious circumstances in Delta State. We start with this shocking revelation coming from Abuja that a former permanent secretary has in his possession 40 brand new SUVs and other vehicles. Although the name of the permanent secretary was not mentioned by the Minister of Information and Culture, Alhaji Eli Mohammed, he said it's part of the outcome of President Muhammadu Buhari's war against corruption. Mr. Mohammed says the anti-corruption war of the president has proven effective and is not only concerned on prosecuting culprits and preventive measures will be taken into make corruption unattractive. The federal government, through the Code of Conduct Bureau, is to commence a trial run of electronic asset declaration to facilitate compliance and also to search and retrieve data on the assets of public officers in 2017. Available statistics at the Ministry of Health reveals that Nigeria's national budget for health fluctuated between 5.4% of the national budget in 2011 to 4.6% in 2016. Some experts have attributed the nation's weak healthcare system to poor financing provisions by the government and are proposing an increased national budget for health and an efficient health insurance scheme as alternative to improving the nation's healthcare delivery system. Meanwhile, the Minister of Health agrees with them on the need to scale up budgetary allocations for the sector and ensure an efficient health insurance scheme. There cannot be any alternative to financing health other than for us to pull money together to fund health. No alternative. We must find the money. And what are the sources? The national budget, two, health insurance, people must contribute. You contribute when you are well, so that you can be taken care of when you are ill. Those who are healthy and rich must also pay for those who are poor. And then we need to tax some essential activities, alcohol, tobacco, and find money. We need to get some money from VAT. And then we are also talking about some allocation from the consolidated revenue, which is provided for in the National Health Act. As you might be aware, the maternal mortality in Nigeria is one of the worst in the world. And it is our cardinal goal under this administration to crash it to less than 100. Professor Isaac Adewale, Minister of Health. To security now, a plot by suspected militants to bomb the third mainland bridge in Lagos may have been foiled by the Nigerian police. A statement from the Force Public Relations Office disclosed that the militants were arrested after weeks of follow-ups on credible intelligence. It says operatives led by CSP Abaki Ari arrested one of the key members of the syndicate, one Abiodun Amos, at the banks of the Majidun River in Ikorodu with two AK-47 rifles. According to the police source, Mr. Amos, alleged to be an explosives expert, also led the police to one of his accomplices who escaped on seeing them leaving behind his car. A search for the vehicle revealed two cartons of gelatine dynamite explosives and hundreds of detonators hidden in the boot of the car. The police say they're still on the trail of the other members of the gang who are on the run while investigations continue. Now, from there, uh, a passenger train carrying soldiers and civilians traveling from Kanu to Lagos State has collided with a, trail, a trailer at a rail level crossing in Kaduna State. If eyewitness accounts say no casualty was recorded in the accident where the moving train cut the trailer into two. Meanwhile, the sector commander, Federal Road Safety Corps, Mr. Francis Sudoma, says the driver of the trailer insisted on crossing the rail line even when the train was blaring its horn, adding that no life was lost in the incident. 
He disclosed that uh, the accidents which occurred at Kawu area in the state capital caused a heavy traffic jam which lasted for over six hours. He says motorists coming from Kanu and other northern states as well as those coming from the southern and eastern parts of the country were stranded at the railway crossing. The train was um, coming from Kanu and is heading to Lagos at a railway crossing at Kau. A vehicle was coming from Mando Axis and um, the train was honing. The train was honing, but it seemed that the driver can hear very well. And uh, it might not be applicable to this driver. So many drivers can hear very well, and they need aiding aid. And they now cross the railway crossing, and the train cut the vehicle into two, separating the body from the head, and the train gets stuck. He couldn't move. From in the night, we try our very best to ensure that the road is open to the motorists. We were able to open one site for easy flow of traffic, and all FRC men were controlling traffic so that um, the vehicle can reach their destination. But the train was there. At around 9 a.m. in the morning, we were able to clear the truck from the road and um, clear the debris for the train to pass and the train eventually passed. And we also used our two trucks to make sure that we remove all the vehicle that blocked the road and clear the road for all the motorists. That is exactly what happened. We were happy that there was no loss of life and that is the reason it's a minor accident. So nobody died, nobody injured and uh, we were really very happy. We were able to restore sanity along the road and the motorists were also happy. Six billion dollars, that's the estimate of the worth of the property destroyed in Borno State during the war against insurgents. Mr. Issa Gusso, one of the special assistants, the governor, Kashim Shatima, told Channel Television that it'll take a long time to rebuild Borno State's infrastructure. He was a guest on our early morning program, Sunrise Daily. And from there, we go to the south-south part of the country where Idumoje Uboka community in Anyocha, North local government, has been thrown into mourning following the gruesome murder of five members of a family in Delta State. Meanwhile, the police command has vowed to unmask those behind the killing of the family of five while they slept. The police commissioner also says... Uh, and he was at the scene of the crime. He describes it as animalistic and inhuman and promised to find the killers. The Yuletide celebration was no doubt an unhappy one for members of the Dumujuwoko community in Anyocha North local government area of Delta State. The community woke up to the news of the gruesome murder of five members of a family. Eyewitness accounts say a grandmother and three children were killed and their bodies burnt right inside the house, while the fourth child was found dead elsewhere in the compound. This man, who identifies himself as the father of the children, speaks on the incident. In fact, when I this morning, people have gathered here. I said, what has happened? I said, my, my children and my wife have burnt ashes. I said, what happened? I said, we died last night, 8 o'clock, I leave them. I said, we could not go to you know, the and they fight too much. We still not stay at Christmas, so... I believe that uh, the Nigerian police force, especially Delta State Commander, the able leadership of the city, would get to the root of this thing. Um, a natural matter has been peaceful and um, we cannot allow this kind of a thing to happen. The Delta State Commissioner of Police, Mr. Zanna Ibrahim, is here to see things for himself and promises to get to the root of the matter. Uh, this action is inhuman, it's inhuman, it's animalistic. Uh, we have found out that one Ugo, 80 years old, who is the grandmother of uh, four other children, Chuka, is 16 years old, uh, Chidima is 12 years old, Onyeshi is 14 years old, and one Agi, who is uh, 14 years old, we are all to death and their living house ignited with fire after 
inflammable must have been poured. In the meantime, residents say their community has been very peaceful and are pleading with the security agencies to prevent a recurrence of such a tragedy. You're watching news across Nigeria. Coming up, police make a foray in the fight against crime in Kaduna State. Stay with us.